welcome back to the series of questions and answers on the diagnosis program before we start i want to remind you that uh, these questions and answers are for the students of the diagnosis program or the students of path of knowledge it will not make any sense for other people especially if you have not heard the first part of the series we are using a very specific terminology which is presented in the first part of the series so i highly recommend that you start from the part number 1 so that you can understand what is being discussed here so we'll continue with some more questions on the topic of self knowledge or self realization number 8 if you are also me then why do i not experience your thoughts so you can see that this is a smaller form of the previous question here the student has heard the teaching that i and you are one and then the student wonders if we are one why are our bodies different why are our thoughts different why is our mind different why are our likes and dislikes different so the teaching was heard but was probably not understood or the contemplation did not happen so when we say i and you are one you are also me i am also you we are talking about the essence the essence is the experiencer the essence is the witness not the body mind or whatever the body mind does including thoughts they are different obviously let us say there is a room in which there is a statue made up of marble of a man and in the same room there is another statue of a woman made up of marble essentially both are marble will say they are the same but non essentially they have different forms so it is possible to have the same essence but different forms but probably here there is no doubt about having different forms or th- thoughts the doubt is why can't i experience those thoughts if you and me are same so probably here the student is still thinking that i am a person and somehow we are all one so whatever this person thinks should become known to me should become my experience but the fact is that uh, the person cannot experience anything the body mind is another experience is another appearance and so are all the thoughts thoughts do not experience each other people do not experience each other people do not experience any thought any body any object they are inert objects experiences appearances one appearance does not experience another appearance and the appearances are all different that body mind is different appearance and this body mind is a different appearance then what is it that is experiencing all the thoughts and it is one experiencer which is me and that is also you that is the essence so ultimately all the thoughts that are appearing anywhere any time any place are all experienced by the experiencer the witness also called me self i am experiencing all the thoughts being produced by all these people nobody else but the question is how come i don't know your thoughts even if the experiencer is one the experience will be limited to the contents of that memory which is being experienced experience of all the memories or all the thoughts is being confused with the knowledge of all the memories and all the thoughts the knowledge is limited so each body mind has its own memory has its own thoughts they are stored there in the memory they are experienced in exactly the same way limited way because limited things are stored there limited things are happening there and this is happening for all the body minds so yes one body mind has no knowledge of what is happening in the other body mind because apparently these memories are disconnected what about the experiencer does it know what is in your mind and does it know what is in my mind and the answer is no it knows nothing there is no knowledge no memory in the experiencer it is simply a witness a pure witness these things appear to it that is the whole existence to which it is appearing then who is it that says these are my thoughts those are your thoughts 
and it is very funny because uh, the one who says this is mine that is yours this is me that is you is also a thought it is called ego or individuality it divides whatever experiences happen after that after that another thought rises this was my experience this is my thought i cannot see what is happening there that is not my thought same way it says this is my body that is not my body this this is my house that is not my house so these activities these processes of ego are there because of survival because of need to survive if the organisms don't do this it will become difficult to survive the categorization of what is mine what is not mine is necessary for survival of this organism so it uh, categorizes thoughts also as mine and not mine but they are not mine and they are not anybody's they are simply appearances in the existence who is the witness of these appearances the existence which is also known as the experiencer and that is me so ultimately everything is being experienced by me what about you there is no you you are also me these divisions are simply other thoughts of ego or individuality the thoughts are simply there they are not mine they are not yours and there is only one witness of all these thoughts which is you and that is same as me so ultimately there is only one experiencer who is experiencing all the thoughts of all the people people do not experience anything and since these thoughts and memories they are local they are experienced exactly in the same way locally as being located so we can take an example of a room with four windows and uh, there is the experiencer standing in the middle of the room it is only a metaphor that is not really true and these windows are nothing but uh, people they are body mind machines through which experiences are happening and moreover let us assume that this experiencer that is standing in the room can uh, attend to different windows can shift its attention and has no memory experiencer has no memory it does not remember what it saw through all these windows so one window is showing view of the street cars and people roads another window is showing view of a park trees birds grass and the third window is showing sky or sea and the fourth window is showing the house of your neighbor which is the worst view possibly so the experiencer standing in between can view through all the windows and if its attention is on one window it forgets about what is coming through other windows the contents of the window are in the window not in the mind or the memory of the experiencer because there is no mind or memory there so whenever the view happens through a window only that much is viewed but when the attention shifts to some other window now the view is different but the previous view is forgotten because there is no memory here now you can imagine that the experiencer has four heads and it can view through all the windows at the same time it does not distinguish between different views it has no memory no knowledge of what is happening so the contents of the windows are illumined by the experiencer and the window if given a memory or an intelligence will say why are the contents of other windows not illumined here why is there no memory of what was seen from the other window if there is only one experiencer and that is me these will be the thoughts that are produced in that window assuming the window as some kind of intelligence why do i have only these thoughts there are other windows why can't i see the views of the other windows so that window has no ability to see anything whenever something is seen it is seen by the experiencer so yes the body minds are different they have different activities going on in them but the experiencer is one that is the essence of whatever is happening there moreover whatever you call as my mind is also largely unknown you can guess that uh, this mind or this memory has uh, millions of events or millions of thoughts stored there do we experience all of them at the same time 
And no, one thought at a time. What happens to the other thoughts? Why why can't we experience my other thoughts at the same time? And there are uh, hundreds of processes that are happening in the mind. They are also not experienced, but we will never say that they that is not my mind. That is somebody else's mind. We'll never say that, even though we cannot experience it. Say for example, there are billions of cells in the body. They are doing something, but we don't experience it. When we never say that that is somebody else's body, because I don't experience it, that body is not mine. We never say like this. So if we cannot experience other mind, how can we say that that is somebody else's mind? Yes, we cannot say it is my mind, but the same is true for this mind, which is apparent here. That is also not my mind. There is no separate individual whom I can call as myself. There is only universal. Nothing is individual. The idea of there being individual or ego or my thoughts, your thoughts, my body, your body. These are fantasies. They these things are cooked up by the mind itself. So this organism is limited. Not much is being experienced through this organism through this window, which is perfectly okay. This is how it should be. Still. the experiencer of this limited experience is universal it's the same you and me are one but yes the experiences are different not the experiencers there are not many experiencers but experiences are different so what will happen if you can experience everybody's thought or more accurately we can say if the experience of all the thoughts happen at the same place at the same time and it should be obvious that the knowledge is same i am not any of these thoughts if it is my thought i am not it if it is somebody else's thought i am not it i am the experiencer i am the witness of all these thoughts it does not matter to whom these thoughts belong so even after getting all the thoughts of everybody or anybody you want the knowledge is exactly the same the essence comes out to be the same so it makes no difference actually and there is another possibility that even after knowing anyone's thoughts there can remain a doubt that still the experiencer is different there yes i can know what you are thinking i can see your thoughts but you can also see your thoughts so you are different from me you are the observer of your thoughts and i am the observer of my thoughts as well as your thoughts this doubt can remain so simply knowing somebody else's thought will not establish the unity of the experiencer it does not prove it simply when we know some something which we do not normally know does not constitute a proof so you and me are not one because whatever you think becomes known here and because whatever i think becomes known there we are one because the one who experiences these things is one there is a difference between knowing something and experiencing something knowledge will be limited limited knowledge will be experienced here limited limited knowledge will be experienced there and if you don't like this word knowledge you can say memory limited memory will be experienced here and limited memory will be experienced there but they are experienced by the one experiencer so the belief here is that the unity of the essence will be proved only by some kind of strange experience not by our normal experiences and that's not true the way we show the unity of the experiencer or the fact that you and me are one we are experiencer only can be seen through our normal everyday experience and that is the complete and necessary evidence nothing else is needed number 9 if i am not any experience then why do i have a body why do i have i have this mind feelings thoughts and why is there a world why do i find myself in a world so basically the student is asking why do i need all these experiences if i am not any of these why don't they simply go away so you can see a little bit of identification is still there that i have a body i have a mind these thoughts are mine this feeling is mine 
and i am in the world so not a little bit probably a lot of ignorance is still there so it is true you are not any experience but it is also true that these experiences of the body world mind thoughts feelings are not yours you do not have these things they are not a part of you they are appearing so the ego process in you in this body mind is responsible for calling these things as me i have all these things it is responsible for calling these things as mine i own them but the experiencer never says these things are mine the experiencer says nothing it is complete silence the witness is witnessing that's all the mind says this thing is mine that thing is not mine and now it looks at the body the body appears my body somebody tells it you are not the body why is there the body then why do i have the body the mind is asking even after knowing that i don't have anything i am the witness but uh, honestly why is there a body why is there a mind why are there good thoughts bad thoughts good feelings and bad feelings and why do we have need to get this experience of world and being a human being these are very natural questions i am not any of these things why are they surrounding me why i am trapped in these experiences there is an identification that i am not this but i am trapped or i have these things so to come out of it you need to drop the identification completely but not only i am not the body i don't have a body that is your direct experience i don't have any thoughts i don't have any feelings these are appearing in the world these are appearing in the body mind i am the witness of these things so complete this identification will uh, destroy this question but uh, the doubt remains why are these things then so the answer is very simple that uh, there is no cause of anything all experiences are causeless the cause and effect and purpose are again thoughts in the mind these things are fantasies of the mind but you can assign arbitrary reasons for these dream like ex- appearances that are appearing here that we have a world so that we can live here we can enjoy the world that is what the mind will say or some other mind will say we are in the world to learn something and some other horrible mind will say that we are here because somebody is punishing us it is our punishment to remain here and suffer so arbitrary reasons are given and they are given by various people already it is happening which one of them is true none they are all fantasies false there is no reason it is simply appearing there is a possibility and right now this is the possibility that is manifested similarly reasons can be given for the body that if there is no body you cannot experience the world you cannot have a human life but that does not answer the question that why it is there why do i want to experience this so these are all wrong answers the right answer is the experiencer wants nothing the experiencer has no preference for this experience or that experience these are all thoughts arising in the mind that's all so the question is meaningless if you want to have a cause or a purpose you can give it some good purpose some beautiful cause and beautiful purpose and complete your life that is your option this is the option for this body mind creature which is appearing for some time momentary then there can be a non dual reply to this question that uh, you do not have this body you do not have this mind or this particular thought or feeling all the bodies are you all the bodies are yours all the feelings that are arising in this universe past present and future are yours all the worlds all the universes realms are you only they are yours only why because it is one ultimately the experience and the experiencer are one so not only you have this body you have countless number of bodies now nobody will want a reason here and nobody will want to know the cause here because it's meaningless so either all or none and that which is all is none they are the same 
So pictures are playing on a screen. You can ask, why are there pictures on the screen? Well, the function of the screen is to display the pictures. Then you can ask, why is there a screen? Why can't I only have pictures? It is not possible. It takes a screen to display the picture. So now nothing can be asked. Why is this screen having this picture? No, it is having all the pictures. There is infinite possibility that anything can appear on the screen. In the same way we can say, why is the clay having this form of the pot? It should remain as clay. If it is not the form, why is there a pot? Why the clay is holding on to that pot? And you can see again mistake in the contemplation here. That uh, clay is clay. It does not matter what form it takes. Currently it is in the form of a pot. But the same clay is found in all the clay objects everywhere. So the clay is not complaining. Why, why do I have a pot? Why I am tied to this pot? Why I am kept in this shop only? Why do we need a shop? The clay never says anything. But somebody told the pot that you are not the pot, you are the clay. And then obviously the pot will start thinking about this thing. What am I doing here? And it will see that everything is purposeless, causeless, meaningless. But the meaning is in the whole, not in the individual. The part's existence is meaningless. But the whole has a meaning. And the meaning is simply being. There is essence clay. There is a possibility of clay taking many, many forms, infinite forms. That is also there. So the meaning is not defined for a part. The meaning is defined for the whole. And the meaning is very simple. To be. Things are appearing because that is their nature. There is an essence that is witnessing because that is the nature. So there is a belief that uh, if I am not an experience, there should not be any experience at all. I don't need it. But these thoughts, these words are said by the mind which knows nothing about what is appearing, why it is appearing because it itself is an appearance. It will never know. Number 10. If I am bliss, then why don't I always experience bliss? So again the student has heard that you are the experiencer, you are complete bliss, absolute bliss. But uh, he will say, no, there is all kind of drama going on. Sometimes I am happy, sometimes I am sad, sometimes I am angry, sometimes I am frustrated. That is not bliss. And yes, that is not bliss, that is mental activity. The pains and pleasures in the body, that is bodily activity, which is again mental. Exactly, that is not bliss. Because bliss is not an experience that comes and goes. Bliss is your nature. Bliss is the name of your essence. You are bliss. And uh, the meaning of bliss is that there is no activity. Blissful, peaceful, like a lake which is not disturbed by waves, winds or anything. Calm and quiet lake. There is nothing there, no activity. That is how you are. That is your true nature. So whatever you are calling as uh, happiness, suffering, whatever it is, not your nature and it will always remain like this. Something or the other will happen and it will appear, it will disappear because they are illusory appearances happening in the mind-body. But the bliss never goes away and it never comes because it is always present. It is eternal bliss and everything happens in the background of this bliss. You can again come back to the screen. The screen has nothing. It is plain. It is still. It is bliss. It is peace. But the pictures are nothing but activity. Sometimes there is a good scene on the screen. Very loving romantic scene is playing. Sometimes there is war and bomb blast. Murders on the same screen. It is always up and down. It is always extreme. It has all the colors. And these are experiences. So they will never be calm and quiet or peaceful. There will be either something good or something bad, something happy or something sad. Everything will be there on the screen. But the good news is that is not you. You are the screen. And there is nothing in the screen itself. Nature of the screen is silence, bliss, peace. And it never goes away. Whatever happens on the screen, the screen remains the same. And everything, the drama that is happening, is happening on the screen. The screen is the background. 
So the student here has again confused himself with the body mind and the body mind is obviously never blissful and you cannot expect it to remain blissful for long. But you are blissful and that bliss is not an experience. You cannot experience it. You can be it. You are already it. Just know what is your nature. And to expect that uh, it will be experienced as something outside me, that will be ignorance. Or my state of mind will become blissful by magic, that is ignorance. Or somehow some people think like this, that after knowledge I will become happy because my teacher said that it is a blissful experience. No, it is a very nice feeling to know who you are. And probably you will become happy for a while that you came to know who you are. But that will not last. You are always there. Whatever is produced in the body-mind because of knowledge or because of ignorance is impermanent. And if it is impermanent, it is not bliss. All the experiences are impermanent. So bliss is not an experience. Bliss is simply your another name. Experiencer is called bliss. It is not an experience. Next question, why is knowledge not permanent? Why doesn't the mind become stable on its own? As you know, the knowledge is stored in the memory and these things are not permanent. So there is no question of expecting the knowledge to remain permanent. Who is permanent? You, not your knowledge. It is a momentary happening in this body-mind that it comes to know its essence. If you want it to become permanent, that is also easy, that is not uh, that difficult. And by permanent here we mean that it should last for the lifetime. The rest of your life can be spent in knowledge. And that is what is called awareness practice. And there are more practices depending on your path, your guru, that can be arranged. But the knowledge will not remain forever. It is simply dropping of the ignorance. There is no thing called knowledge. It is simply purification of your intellect. So it changes. Yes, it is impermanent. So there is no problem that it is impermanent. The problem is in expecting that everything that happens should remain as it is. No, it will not remain as it is. If there is this expectation, that means there is already ignorance. It cannot be called knowledge now. Make my knowledge permanent. But look, you are ignorant. You don't have knowledge. What are you trying to make permanent? The knowledge is nothing is permanent. That which is permanent is not a thing. It is not knowledge. It is not ignorance. It does not have knowledge. It does not have ignorance. So other part of this question is why doesn't the mind become stable on its own? So probably it is being asked that why the mind keeps thinking that I am a person, I am a body-mind. I am not the experiencer. Why it forgets? The knowledge. Even if you can do something to keep the memory of uh, this thing alive, that I am not the body-mind, that will be enough. That can be called permanent. But that also goes away. It takes only two minutes to forget who you are. So what can be done so that the knowledge becomes stable in the mind? So as I said, there are some methods, there are some practices to always remember, to always abide as the experiencer, to abide in your true nature all the time. It is a matter of practice. So yes, it will not become stable instantly because uh, the mind is now corrupted completely because of lifelong ignorance. And the only effort that is that will be needed will be to remove this impurity, to remove these thoughts that I am something else, I am not the experiencer or the witness. To remove the identification with the body-mind, it can take a little bit of time and effort. But how can you become that which you are already? Simply don't forget who you are. It is very simple. It should not take effort. It takes a lot of effort to do all these practices, to do something to make the mind quiet and blissful, these things are effortful. But how much effort will it take to be that which you already are? Simply don't be that which you are not. It takes a lot of effort to be that which you are not. A metaphor is, suppose you are a man. Somebody told you you are a man. 
not a woman don't think you are a woman you are a man now you have a question that what to do to become a man so the answer is very simple don't do anything it is it cannot happen by doing anything you are already it just don't be somebody else don't be a woman don't be another animal you are a human being you are a man remember this so it does not take effort for a man to become a man he is already man but if somebody tells him to behave like a woman or behave like some other creature it will take enormous amount of effort and training so what has happened is this training has happened for your lifetime so much so that you have forgotten that you are a man and you behave as something else so your training is so far to not to be the experiencer to behave as something else not experiencer now it will take a little bit of time and effort to undo this training but there is no training or effort to be what you are recall what you are and there you are the experiencer already there is another expectation in the students that this mind will become like the experiencer and that is also wrong expectation the mind will remain mind the body will remain body they will not become like experiencer and there is no problem if the mind is like mind and the body is like body if the body does things that the bodies do and the mind does things that minds do you should not beat them into becoming something else which they are not moreover they are not yours this thought that my body and mind should become like pure like the experiencer is also ignorance it is also ego what you can do is really let them be what they are let things as they are they are perfect they are fine they are beautiful and you be what you are it is so simple so if you are a man don't do anything to become a man why this will not happen today because as you can see as it is revealed from these questions there is still a lot of ignorance enough contemplation and introspection has not happened moreover there are doubts about the knowledge he said i am the experiencer but i don't feel it <laughs> he said you and me are one but no there is no evidence for that so there is doubt there is distrust and there is superstition like the example of seeing myself as something else in some other supernatural state so all these impurities are still there so it will not happen if it happens that you remain stable in the knowledge that will be a miracle given the state and why condition of that student or the seeker is so bad because probably uh, he or she is, is not on a, any path not following any tradition their life goal is something else probably happiness money many partners marriage children social status politics whatever people normally have and they heard it somewhere that this knowledge will make my life better they said it will make you blissful it will make you omnipresent omnipotent so they get attracted to this philosophy but no it is not magic moreover whatever notions you had will be destroyed that which is trying to become happy will be seen as not existing an illusion so when these desires are not fulfilled the seeker is uh, lost whatever he thought is not given here it's not his path it's not giving him whatever he wants so he will never become stable in the knowledge it is not the life goal of that person to remain in knowledge and probably the biggest issue is that uh, there is no guru there is no teacher there is no mentor or master of that student so most probably he or she does not know what to do now he heard the diagnosis program on youtube on the podcast and wherever now has no clue what to do and has all these doubts and questions and blind beliefs so the biggest reason is not having a guru whom to ask where to search which book will provide me the answers so all these attempts are usually a failure because only a guru can save you nobody else no book no video and obviously not your society these things will cause more confusion because knowledge is ultimately simplification not accumulation it is not complex what is complex is all these impurities doubts and ignorance when these are solved the man becomes a man which he already was experiencer is experiencer mind is mind body is body and world is world
absolutely no problem so there are impurities in the seekers and their life goals are not clear because there are probably other desires many of these desires are suppressed and they try to find some consolation in their spirituality which they never find and sometimes there are physical disorders mental distortions mental disorders so if somebody is is a seeker that does not automatically mean that uh, he is an embodiment of perfection no they will come with all these impurities now you have only two options either you come on path of knowledge after resolving all your issues and then taking the knowledge self knowledge or you take the self knowledge and then start doing the purification work or the spiritual work there is no third option is it really necessary to make the knowledge permanent or to become stable in knowledge and the answer is no it is your choice choice of the body mind actually it is a good choice because this creature is saved from further suffering there is no other use of spiritual knowledge so we'll continue with more questions in the next episode thank you everybody for listening